Hey everybody, it's Chainsaw Reacts back. Let's get another reaction for you guys. Take guys, of course, you're continuing the journey of The Mandalorian. This is Season 3, Episode 4, the newest episode. Title, of course, we won't know until we get into the episode. After I finish this episode, I'll be halfway through with this season. It's kind of crazy. We'll be halfway through Season 3 of The Mandalorian after finishing this week's episode. So... Last week, I did not react to Season 3, Episode 3 of The Mandalorian. Some of you are probably wondering, where's that video? Well, over the last couple of years, I've been waking up at 4.15 a.m., 4.30 a.m. over the last couple of years covering these Marvel and Star Wars shows from Disney+. Plus, and a good portion of those times waking up covering these shows, it's not been worth it. It's not been worth my sleep schedule, uh, screwing up my sleep schedule. And I've decided now that if I'm seeing online people are going... Eh, it's okay or it wasn't that great i'm gonna go back to bed and i may cover the episode later but i decide after seeing people saying last week that it was underwhelming episode and that not a lot of things happen there's a huge chunk of the episode not focused on den now some people say well that's a spoiler like, look to me it wasn't because i'm like sometimes these shows you know sidetrack or whatever but i'm like you know what whatever so i didn't react to the episode i watched it yesterday the big portion of the episode, of course, focused on that Doctor character they introduced in Season 1. Honestly, if I would have woke up last week early to cover that episode, I probably would not have had a good time. Now, the opening and ending of the episode with Din and Bo and everything, and the whole thing of the mythosaur or whatever, and the fact that she's not telling him. It's like, did you see anything down there? No. Did you see anything alive down there? He's like, what? And she's like, nothing. Nothing. Didn't want to say anything. And now she's a part of their, you know, kind of sector or whatever of mandalorian because she bathed in the waters so i thought all that stuff was interesting but it would have made me frustrated because we had a huge chunk of that gigantic pretty much hour-long episode dedicated to that doctor character that i could really care less about like i just don't care um it wasn't like you know boring storytelling what well, kind of was but i i hope there's some something some sort of connection later on because why would they show like wasted a lot of the time in my opinion on this character who I didn't think really is going to matter at the end. And it seems like it's not going to matter unless they're introducing that other character that we got introduced to in that big segment. And that character is going to pop up later, possibly. So anyways, so I, I'm choosing myself ultimately over, you know, meh TV at this point, because, you know, YouTube is fun and all, but I need to focus on myself at times. That's what it is. So anyways, I'm enjoying overall the Mandalorian season three, besides last week's episode being, yeah, but we'll see what happens here. People are saying they really enjoyed this episode and there was some really cool stuff. So I'm like, okay. So I woke up and here I am. So let's dive in now, guys. The Mandalorian season three, episode four. Let's go. Training. She's like, interesting, maybe. It's crazy to see all these Mandalorians. Like, it's so cool that we've gotten to this point now, right? Playtime's over. Aww. I'm gonna need you to focus. They're like, okay, whew, we can go away now. <laughs> Are you sure this is a good idea? If he has I mean... ever from foundling to apprentice, he must learn. What weapon? Let the challenge decide. Hmm. Guys, bring the training gun. One does not speak unless one knows. Is that not the creed? Well, I know. Perhaps this lesson is for you, then. The training guards. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> my dad was this the is same crazy. way. This is crazy. The mark must be visible to score. One round, highest score wins. Begin! Ooh. Point. Begin! Right as fuck. <laughs> oh, Jesus. What the fuck? That thing flew a, f a long way to get that child. Oh, damn, they're too far away. Oh, shit. Yeah. I kept a high altitude and followed it to its lair. I know how to get there. Scale the rest of the way on foot. I'll join you. 
Buzz Vizsla. And join the Street Hawk training team to accompany you. Leaving him behind. It's okay. No, it's okay. We shape ourselves. The forge can reveal weaknesses. Hmm. I'm about to say. Whoa. Damn, come on, come on. Get the young nigga together and go! Shit. We're seeing more of it. Everything's gonna be alright, kid. Is that Ahmed Best? What? I think that's his name. Two. Damn, okay. Damn, it's a lot of them. Go, go, go. I, I bet. I'd, I'd, I'd close it up too. <laughs> What's he doing? Oh shit, he has a plan. Oh! We're gonna meet up with some friends of mine. But hold on, it's gonna be a bumpy landing. Damn. It was a bumpy landing. This is so crazy, we're seeing all this. Get out of there. Come on, let's go. There you go. We got to see who saved him, who got him out of there. Wow. Mandalorian Steel shall keep you safe as you grow stronger. I love this. You will grow into this. Oh, this is so nice. Wow, look at that. All the fucking Mandalorians. It's so cool. God. How do you eat when other people are around? You don't. You are the leader of the war party. You have the honor of staying by the fire. Oh. This is the way. This is the way. I about to say, I thought at some point we're going to see Katie Sackhoff's face again. Like, there's no way they could just not have Bo-Katan ever take her helmet off again. Be careful. Be careful. It's a little difficult, <laughs> but hey, it's all about the stealth, so definitely a nest up there. Yep. Wait until we clear the area. He's my son. Oh. <laughs> babies, babies. There you go. There you go. Come on. Take my hand. Damn. Come on. Come on. Drop them. There you go. Working together. Oh shit. There you go. Ooh. There you go. Oh. Good job. Okay. It's all in the water. There you go. Yep. I'm okay now. Thank you. I mean, this is the way. This is the way. Now, that's that was nice. You have honored your house and all of Mandalore. Yeah. You have done the highest honor of the Kree. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what the hell? You know, she could tell them at the Mythosaur. There's a reason why she's not, though. I feel like she should. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I... I wonder what her purpose is. Oh. It is a noble vision. No. No, an actual one. I mean a real one. But it was real. It was real. This is the way. This was a great episode. This was worth getting up for. This was awesome i think besides the training thing and saving the kid the foundling from that creature which i gotta talk about some of that <laughs> for sure um in terms of their location where they're at and everything but the biggest thing in this episode was the extended the huge flashback of grogu during order 66 because the question has always been what exactly happened we've seen a little bit of the flashback we saw those four jedi protecting grogu but then it cuts away. So we don't know who saves Grogu. There was a lot of theories of it was Mace Windu, which would have been awesome. 
what was was surprising it was ahmed best i verified by the credits ahmed best was playing a jedi who of course infamously or famously depending on how you look at it he played jar jar binks in the prequel trilogy and the fact is they got him into this as a jedi who saved grogu and got him off world during the worst time ever for the jedi like the fall of the jedi and to see all the things they were showing all the clones these different jedi and then he was the sole jedi to get him out what happens when they go into warp or whatever it's, i think it's called warp in star trek or whatever but when they go and they get off world what happens next we don't know we don't know but interesting interesting and that clearly was very important clearly very important because we had that four jedi who sacrificed their lives to protect grogu and then having his jedi meet grogu i think he must have known grogu before this moment but literally took another jedi uh, jedi's lightsaber and was defending him and then they went off on the speedster or whatever or a little you know and they're off and they're flying around and shit and my god it was intense it was intense and he was thinking it and it wasn't like you know like i think because i think it was ahsoka that was like interacting with grogu that had that moment of like oh okay so here's that flashback it was like he thought back on that personally because he was getting a piece of armor because he trained and he won a duel and it was really cool now in a sense did he cheat I don't think so because you're supposed to show your skill and Grogu can jump around in those training darts and took the kid out in three hits. No question. <laughs> he got hit twice in the first two rounds because he's like, what am I supposed to do here? And he's like, Grogu, just listen to your dad. <laughs> you have to show them what you can do. It's going to be an advantage. And he gets a little armor piece. It's so adorable. It's so adorable. Um, before we get to the creatures and shit, the flying creature, they, the three new foundlings, the babies, anyways, before we get to that, I want to talk about the fact that I was starting to say, okay, is Bo-Katan ever going to mention the Mythosaur that we saw at the end of episode two? Is she ever going to mention it? Because the question is, what's going to be done about the Mythosaur that's still alive on Mandalore? clear as fucking day it wasn't a vision as as the armor was trying to suggest because Bo's like because she i thought she lost her chest piece at first when she was when we were fighting that uh that creature but it was just a, it was a shoulder piece so she gets a mythosaur on there and she's like well what if i told you i saw one she's like saw what a mythosaur well if you fall you know if you fall our the path or whatever you're, you see many things see many visions N no I'm saying I saw a mythosaur in the waters of Mandalore. I saw it. And she's like, all right. And then walks away. Like, doesn't really address that maybe the armor knows. I don't know. Or maybe the armor is like, hey, you know what? I'm not going to argue what you thought you saw or what you think you saw. Because, you know, what am I supposed to say? I wasn't there. You both are there because I because she brought that up in episode three to Den. Did you see anything down there? No, see anything alive down there? What? Nothing. Nothing. Like, so clearly she wants to tell them, and I think she's gonna go back to Mandalore because you know because Armor said you can stay here as long as you want, you can leave whenever you want. You know, just understand right now you're a part of us blah blah and even seeing her say, this is the way it's kind of crazy like bo -Katan saying that and then i'm like there's no way they're not gonna have bo -Katan not take off her helmet again, like ever again because it's katie Sackoff, and so she did take her helmet off again during the eating a little segment um but that, that, that explains it when they were on like a hunting trip like they were for that creature and saving that kid like they all go their own separate ways in different directions and take off their helmets away from everybody else so the thing is how do you know when you're done and you're able to get up and put your helmet back on and then start walking around and getting it? So what if you run to another one that isn't done eating yet or whatever and they have their helmet off so there's, there's, there's a list of questions about that um so training stuff is all cool seeing all these mandalorians so then here comes the giant fucking bat not really like a bat but like, it was like a mixture of like a bat bird 
I don't even fucking know, gargoyle type creature. It came up and swooped up a foundling. Turns out the one Mandalorian with the giant fucking like weapon and shit, like the cannon, he, he freaking shoots around and shit. We've seen him uh, a number of times on the show. He's very distinctable amongst others. That was his son that was taken. And they didn't reveal that right away, but that was his son. So they start chasing that creature with their jetpacks and they run out of fuel. It gets away. That clearly, this creature flies extremely far for food. Now, they mentioned this. This has happened before. And my thing is, okay, you were attacked at your front door by that crocodile, alligator, turtle type hybrid. Which we see again for a brief moment when it kills the flying gargoyle bat type creature at the end when they save the foundling and they take, take it and, and it falls into the water and then he gets eaten okay so you got attacked your front door in episode one of this season by one of those gigantic alligator crocodile turtle things hybrids and now we're finding out this is not the first time this flying thing has showed up this is not the first time it's taken others location 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 usually when you say that it's like you're here because it's location 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 to other things well in this instance your location is shit you need to move <laughs> Because clearly, you're, that thing knows where to go. That's why it flew all the way the fuck out there. Because it knows, hey, there's food out there for my babies. So that's why he did it. Or she. That's a she, I guess, right? It's mom. Still, it knew. It knew. So then traveling to a certain point and then climbing up to the top was interesting seeing the babies was kind of crazy. And now the fact that the mom's dead, now they have more foundlings to train okay um <laughs> and they're gonna train the babies i don't know <laughs> i don't know that was such a weird moment but it was a really cool sequence to see them save the foundling and to take out the giant creature and the fact is too it wasn't simple that's what i liked same thing with that gigantic hybrid turtle alligator whatever thing just like with that it took some time to take it out of course din came in and saved the day with his ship however with this flying creature instance it wasn't like a simple, okay, let's just shoot it a couple times and it's going to fall down. It took a lot a lot of maneuvering and working together and trying to coordinate attacks to take it down. Because it was a pretty big creature, so like it wasn't going to go down easy. So I'm glad that it didn't go down easy. So it's a great action sequence. It's a great episode of the show. I really enjoyed what they were doing here. I think ultimately, um, just prediction-wise, I think the mythosaur in the, in the waters of Mandalore... That's going to probably be a significant plot point, I'm thinking, in the back half of the season. I'm not sure when and where, but I'm assuming since she did address it, Bo-Katan did bring it up, that we're going to have to go back to Mandalore. We're going to have to go back. I don't know what that, I don't know if that means that they're all going to go back and they're going to retake Mandalore. I don't know. I don't know. So I think that's going to happen. I do think Grogu may speak his first word maybe at the end of this season i'm thinking more so just the more they're focusing i mean obviously the focus is on grogu because he's like basically the main character besides den but you know what i'm saying i feel like that's gonna happen we'll see um overall i had a great time with this episode it was really fun to see the flashbacks and to see the training and the creature sequence it was really cool and uh that's why i love mandalorian besides you know what happened last week i love this show i really do so what you guys think of the episode? I'm curious to know your thoughts. Whatever thoughts you have, guys, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought about this week's episode. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace out.